Gecko is out, baby. I think we got enough time to try him and his buddies out, and I think we have a good idea of where he belongs in the meta. No, we hate to be party poopers, but some of you might not like what we have to say about your new main. But hey, we tell you as it is, and if we're wrong, we own up to it. So let's jump into our new 6.05 Valorant Agent tier list. But before we talk about Gecko and his spot in the tier list, if you want to stay up to date on any meta Riot throws at us, you should check us out at Skillcapped. We have agent-specific courses created by Radiant One Tricks, including a Gecko one on the way, map guides, and a ton more for anyone wanting to really step up their game. Or we can set up a VOD review for any of you higher skilled players over in our Ask a Pro Discord channel. So stop wasting RR and come over to our website. It's our job to help you improve. Starting in our S tier, we have Jet and Killjoy. Now come on, be honest with yourselves. There's a reason why Jet had one of the highest pick rates in VCT lock-in. She is easily the most flexible agent in the game, and despite being on a 12 second timer, her get out of jail card of a dash is going to be broken in any tactical shooter. And as for Killjoy, there just isn't a sentinel in the game that can match the amount of value she gets. Her lockdown is round winning, her turret and alarm bot are hard to deal with, and with the right setups, her nano swarms are literally good for one every time. Until we see some major changes to these two, I don't see the S tier changing much. Let's kick the A tier off with the initiators. We have Gecko, Sky, Sova, KO, and Breach in that order. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, hey, you said we weren't going to like what you had to say about Gecko, but you put him in A tier. Well, there's a big asterisk by this placement. I think Gecko can be A tier in pro play. Hear me out. This dude can throw out any of his abilities run over them, grab them, and he has them up in 10 seconds. Theoretically, this guy could throw 15 or something flashes around if he wanted to. I'm not a math major, but 15 is a lot. But in ranked, how often does your team even survive past first 30 seconds? Yeah, exactly. In pro play, I could definitely see him and his double charge ultimate work, but in ranked, I don't see it. But hey, that premier tournament mode is coming out, so make sure one of your friends can play him. But as of now, in competitive play, he's A tier. Now, I'll be honest, the rest of the initiators are pretty good. It all just depends on the map that you're playing on. Sova is a must pick on Icebox and Ascent. Sky is great on any map, it seems like nowadays. Breach is crazy on Fracture and Haven. KO is arguably the strongest agent in competitive play, and you can't go wrong with any of them. I'm being serious when I say this. You could pick any of these initiators on any map, and it would be considered a good pick. It just depends on what the team needs and what you're comfortable with. Now, for smokes, Omen is still king. Ever since Bind and Breeze got removed, Brimstone and Viper just haven't felt as relevant. He has insane one ways on every map, the best flash in the game, and players are now starting to realize how strong his ultimate is. It's like a mega jet dash that can be used to flank the enemy team quick and take them off guard. Not only that, but he's fun to play too. His entire kit complements each other. You can make plays and play mind games with his shrouded step, combine those with his flash, and you can build up a neat highlight reel quick. Plus, playing in his smokes is super strong. Until some new maps come in or some major balance changes, Omen to me is undisputably the best controller. Next, let's talk Raze. And remember, these tiers are kind of separated by role. Like, Breach isn't better than Raze, per se, because that would be like comparing apples to oranges. I have these agents ranked in their class, but Raze is almost as flexible as Jet. She's a tier 2 op agent, has incredible stopping power and movement, and her showstopper can clear an entire room. But I do think she has the highest skill ceiling due to her satchels. So if you're tired of Jet, definitely pick Raze up. She's so good on these new close quarters maps. And last in the A tier, we have Sage. Sage is the only agent in the game that can single-handedly change the pace of a matchup. As soon as you find out you're playing against a Sage, the game immediately slows down and you have to respect her utility. Plus, with Split being added back into the pool, which is her best map, she becomes that much stronger. With the A tier out of the way, our B tier is topped with Astra, Brimstone, and Viper in that order. Astra is a very good controller. No other agent in the game has the global presence she has. Not only that, but the ability to recall stuff is big in a lot of areas on a lot of maps creating temporary timings but a lot of people don't like playing her due to her high learning curve and the constant communication she needs from her teammates to get the most out of her you need your team to talk but she also arguably has the best ultimate out of any controller great for fakes retakes or extra smokes Astra in general is great but Brimstone and Viper on the other hand suffer some major issues while Brim smokes last a while he only gets three and his Molly is mediocre at best and while the stim beacon is nice and tops off his kit as the fast execute kit I'd argue that Omen does it better with his big flash. And Viper isn't that great, as two of her three meta maps just got rotated out in Bind and Breeze. She's a staple in Icebox, but on other maps, you need a second controller. And how often can you convince your teammates to run a comp like that? It's hard enough getting one person to play smokes, let alone two. Next in our B tier, we have two more duelists in Neon and Yoru. Now, these agents are great, don't get me wrong, but when compared to their counterparts, why bother? Raze and Jet both have better space making, movement, and stall. Yoru could potentially be S tier, but the amount of hours and frustration 
information you need to dump into him definitely pushes me away. Plus, Neon's ultimate kinda sucks in my opinion. Why does it have a timer? Regardless, while they're not bad by any means, I just don't see a reason to run these two when you have much better options higher up on this list. Now, we're forgetting about one initiator, and that's Fade. The only issue I have with her is that her prowlers are made out of paper mache. The rest of her kit is great. Her C's combos well with a lot of agents. If put in the right spot, her haunt can get you a ton of info, and her nightfall is really strong. Right now, her spot in the meta is to be able to get constant information, since she has a lot of utility. And if that's what you're looking for, then great. But until her prowlers get a small health or duration buff, I think B tier is a good spot for Fade. Lastly, in our B tier, we have Cypher, and he suffers from a pretty unique problem. It's that almost everything in the game can break his setups, especially that we've been seeing more and more Sky now. His trap wires are in danger, and this dog is seriously messing them up. And despite getting buffed, he's still the only one with a situational ultimate. This, in my opinion, should never be the case in a game like Valorant. I think he needs another small, tiny buff, or just rework his ultimate, and he'll climb out of B tier. Alright everyone, I talked about Gecko before, but I honestly think that this is where he belongs, in the C tier. I'm just not convinced. I've played with countless Geckos in my ranked games, and I've never felt like they've provided the same value that a Sova or Sky would. The rounds simply just don't last long enough to abuse the fact that his friends recharge in 10 seconds. And yes, I know Wingman can plant or defuse the spike, but if he couldn't, Gecko would be a horrible agent. His molly is big, his flash is okay, but it doesn't last long, and Wingman is a nice option to have when no one feels safe planting. And Thrash is good too, but she detains teammates? That just doesn't make sense and feels like Riot wants people to troll with it. But if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. In the meantime, I'm putting Gecko in the C tier. Next in our C tier comes Phoenix and Reyna. These two are just simply not as good as the other duelists. Sure, Phoenix has a 6 orb ultimate, but I think it's massively overrated. This guy runs at you, shoot him, and Reyna only has two flashes as her entire kit with a bad ultimate. Sorry, but I just don't see it. If you want to play Phoenix, just play KO instead, and just don't play Reyna. Next, let's talk about Chamber. While he isn't bad on some maps like Fracture and Lotus, I just don't see the hype behind him like he used to have. The other Sentinels just outclass him so hard, and so does Jet if you need an opper. But if your duelist went Raze or Neon, then Chamber isn't that bad of a pick and can really bolster down your defense if played around correctly. And lastly, we have Harbor. Now, I know we've been seeing him quite a bit in professional play, but I don't think you can pull off the same shenanigans with him in rank. Plus, every time you've seen Harbor in a pro match, it's usually been with a second smoker. Again, until he receives a small buff like not slowing your teammates when they pass through his walls, I don't see a Harbor meta coming. By now, you should have a good idea of where each agent stands in the current meta. I know it hurts to say, but I don't think Gecko is that good. I could be wrong, but until then, he and his cute little friends are staying down in the C tier. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel down below. It really does help us out. Before we go, keep in mind that this was all just one of many in-depth guides that we have on our website. Also, if you want a chance at having your VOD reviewed, be sure to subscribe on our website at skillcap.com. We also have tons of Radiant Smurf commentaries where we have Radiant players walk you through exactly how to have the most impact possible in a bunch of different situations. So, what are you waiting for? You've got nothing to lose. Head on over to skillcap.com and get started on your way to the rank that you deserve. And yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening, guys. We here at Skillcap want to thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.